Give a clap offering unto the Lord. Oh, we thank you, Father. You are wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, we want to worship the Almighty God. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be exalted. We are saying holy this morning. In Shona, we say Muchene. Hallelujah. In, in South African language, you say Mwele. Hallelujah. We want to worship the Almighty God. We want to exalt his name. Thank you, Jesus. Murishe Shama Shimba Unotonga Neuchene Muchene Chene Muchene Murishe Shama Shimba Unotonga Ne uchene, 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 muri mchene baba, chene, 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 Oh, 
Uno chonga ne kushinga pe dino chini chene oh chene eh chene dimi che se masimba uno chonga ne kushinga pe dino chini chene oh chene oh chene Africa, Africa. 
will be safe in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before we proceed on our prayer, the owner of this car should go and attend to it. Hyundai Black HWC 386NW Hyundai Black colored HWC 386NW Go and attend to your car outside. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. I want you to talk to next person, present you that you are looking beautiful this morning. Welcome to the House of Solution. We are about to pray for Africa. The Lord bless you as you come, and the Lord bless you as you are going to join us to pray for Africa. In Jesus' name, we have greeted each other. Amen. We appreciate the presence of our father and our mama in the house. We pray that the Lord will continue to enrich you and be with you. And this ministry, which will, God has used to establish the grace of God, will not cease in manifesting in this ministry in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to pray. The Bible says in Isaiah 28, verse 18, it says, Your covenant with death will be annulled, and your agreement with Shuel will, be, will not stand. We are praying for Africa. And I want to say it after me when I call the prayer. Are we ready for this? Say, are we ready for this? Say, oh Lord, my Father. Oh Lord, my Father. Say, oh Lord, my Father. Oh Lord, my Father. Destroy every evil covenant. Destroy every evil covenant. In African land. In Africa now. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Oh Lord, my Father. Lord, my Father. Destroy every evil covenant. Destroy every evil covenant. In African land. In Africa. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Oh Lord, my Father. Oh God. Oh Lord, my Father. Destroy every evil. Lord, my father, destroy, destroy, Africa. destroy by evil covenant in Africa land by the blood, by the blood. Satata, Zode Begala Taba, Bagato Tote de Begis, yes, O Lord, destroy evil covenant in Africa land by the blood, by the blood. Rata, 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 Mighty name we are praying. Say Jesus, mighty name we are praying. Say my father. My father. With confidence. Say my father. My father. Destroy every agreement. Destroy every agreement. With the kingdom of darkness. In the kingdom of darkness. In Africa. Say my father. My father. Destroy every agreement. With the kingdom of darkness. In Africa. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father. Destroy every agreement. With the kingdom of darkness in Africa, Lord, destroy my, father, every evil my father, my father, destroy every agreement with the kingdom of darkness. The Rata Toshata, Yeres, Holy Ghost, destroy every agreement with the kingdom of darkness in Africa. My father, destroy, destroy every agreement. Holy Ghost, in Jesus, mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Say my father. My father. Say my father. My father. Help the nation of Sudan. Help the nation of Sudan. Help the nation of Sudan. Help the nation to of overcome Sudan. sickness. To overcome sickness. And epidemic. Of 
an epidemic in the land. Say, my father, help the nation of Sudan to overcome sickness. An epidemic in the land. Open your mouth and begin to pray. My father, help the nation of Sudan and Africa to overcome sickness. An epidemic in the land. My father, help the nation of Sudan. Holy Ghost, help the nation of Sudan. Katato Shata. Jesus, mighty name we are praying. Say, Father, Father, destroy every spirit of poverty in Africa and bless African land and let them eat in plenty. And let them eat in plenty. Say, my, my father, destroy, destroy every spirit of poverty spirit of in, Africa in Africa and help Africa, Africa to eat in plenty. In, plenty. in the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Father, destroy the poverty. Poverty in Africa. Bless Africa. Let them eat in plenty. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. In Jesus. Mighty name we are praying. In Jesus mighty name we are praying. Say my father. Fight the battles. Of rapists. And condemnation. Of women. In Africa. Say my father. Fight the battles. Of rapists. And condemnation of women. In Africa. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father. Fight the battles. Of rapists. And condemnation. Of women in Africa. Holy Ghost, fight the battles. Rata tata, 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 rata Jesus, mighty name, we are praying. Say, oh Lord, my Father, correct every mistake of our leaders in Africa. Say, oh Lord, my Father, correct every mistake of our leaders. In Africa, in Africa and give to them the spirit of wisdom in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray, oh Lord, correct every mistake of our leaders in Africa and give the spirit of wisdom. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Let us pray for our final branches and the headquarters. Combine it together. The law fight every battles that this ministry is facing. Fight and deal with every challenges of freedom for our nations and branches. Open your mouth and begin to pray, Father. Zota tatosh, zeta kruabrandash, zata gata brandosh. Every challenges of freedom for our nations, every battles of this ministry. Father, we pray, destroy them, destroy them, destroy them, destroy them, destroy them. Holy Ghost, destroy them. Father, every battles, every battles, every battles, every battles of the whole nation, destroy, 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 destroy. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hallelujah. Let's all have our seats. Please look at three people by your side. Tell them, I'm so happy you are in church this morning. I said, look at three people. Give them a smile and tell them you are so beautiful. You are so handsome. I'm so excited that you are sitting beside me this morning in church. Amen. The best place to be on a Sunday service like this is freedom for all nations. Jam your hands together for Jesus. Miracles are not 
accidental occurrences. It is the acts of God provoked by the desperate cry of men. Anytime you see a miracle occur in the life of men, it is because a cry has gone out from the mouth of men unto God and divinity intervened in the affairs of humanity to change their stories when this occurs one of the keys to preserve such miracles is the act of gratitude tell your neighbor the act of gratitude gratitude is very powerful two people have a testimony in the book of Luke chapter 1 visited by the angel Gabriel that they will have a child. One of them with a heart of gratitude asked how could this be? And she was favored. Why the other one that lacked gratitude became dumb? So gratitude through the mystery of thanksgiving provokes favor. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women. Why? She was filled with a heart of gratitude. As a church, it is a covenant practice as we always engage in the mystery of thanksgiving. It is not a religious feast. It is a covenant principle. So this morning, in order for us to engage that same mystery, I like us with a heart of gratitude expressed in clap offering. Let's welcome the following people, Brother Pule, Sister Zanele, Brother Abayomi. Don't stop clapping until they get here. Brother Pule, Sister Zanele, and Pastor Abayomi. Show gratitude to God as you clap for Jesus. As you clap for Jesus. Amen. Please tell us your name and where you are coming from. Um. Final freedom, final family. Morning, my name is Pule from the north of Pretoria. Uh, I have the following testimony. On the 11th of August this year, during the International Conference for Women, a Papa prophesied to, to my wife, I wasn't around, and uh, he said we having a, an attack financially and he also prophesied that uh, my wife will be promoted i'm here today to confirm it that one yes indeed our finance was under attack but as i'm speaking to you now gradually windows of heaven are beginning to open for us as a family financially <laughs> And secondly, within the 10 days of the prophecy, my wife received an acting letter of appointment on a promotional post, which, which I believe will soon be converted into a permanent position. And I want to thank God for that. Thank you. Hallelujah. What advice? would you have for the viewers that are watching us all over the world? Uh, the advice is very brief. First, indeed, yes, uh, Fano is the place to be uh, because I, I think in Papa and all the pastors in the house, God has actually chosen uh, the, the best messengers for, for him to, to serve and as such as, as church we need to continue to pray for Papa and all the pastors 
for more wisdom and strength because their task is not that easy. Thank you. Celebrate Jesus. He said, Fano is the place to be. Tell your neighbor, Fano is the place to be. Praise the Lord. Freedom. Fano family. I just want to give this testimony to the glory of God. Uh, this uh, tablet in my hand, uh, it happens that it fell sometimes uh, ago. Then the I have to change the screen <clears throat> but when I took it to one Pakistan it's very close to uh, where I used to work before then uh, <clears throat> sorry because I, I know him so that's why I took it to him actually it's not him that I know it's one of his friends but his friend happens to go back to Pakistan so then I gave it to him he said he's going to fix it for me that uh, it's going to take uh, 750. I said, okay, it's fine. But when I gave it to him, he opened it. He said, ah, this tablet is new and this one is very expensive. I said, why are you saying that? Just fix the screen. That's all. You don't need to be asking it's new or whatever. Then I gave it to him, but I couldn't have time to go there. So he spent about two months. Then the first day I... He took this tablet there. I asked him that, okay, give me your number. Because I know your friend, I don't know you. So I collected his number with a, and he wrote his name on it. <clears throat> Something just said I should collect his number. Then after two, two months, when I called the line, it's not going. It's going to voice me. Then one day, I just happened to call. Then he answered me. I said, I'm busy, I couldn't come. I hope my tablet is still okay. He said, it's okay. It's fine that I should come and collect it. Not knowing that, he already moved out of that place. Moved to another place. Because when I got there, this past week, I went there. I can't find him. They, they even they locked some of their uh, items in that shop. They said, they, one of the security told me that they didn't pay the owner of the shop the rent for what about, did the Lord do for you? about four or three months. Then I asked that I, I was praying to God that how can I get this? I don't know where the, the phone is called, going to voice me. Eventually I kept on asking God every night when I'm praying I kept on asking, I kept on asking. But there was a time prophet was praying it was, I think it was last week when he said that he, he wants to go somewhere, he needs a, a quick road then that eventually God said hold road, told him that he didn't know eventually, I had that then when I was praying that night, I said Lord if, if you know where these people is, even if they are gone or where, just show me wherever they are you know that night I was sleeping, I just saw I don't know is the angel or I don't know it's just showing me as if I'm uh, in real life showing me the streets exactly where they are and two of them and the face of that guy then when I woke up in the morning I said ah no this must be God telling me then I went straight to the direction then when I got there when he heard my voice he bent his head because he saw my face I never see him I was still looking for the shop then one of his friends told me no it's not here I said no I'm asking for Ali he's here because I saw two of you in my trances he's here you you and the then when he heard my voice he came out I said, where's my tablet? I collect this tablet. And I didn't, even, I didn't even give him anything. He just said, no, just take it, just take it. So I want to thank God, at least when you have something in mind and you never give up, you keep on asking the face of God, seeking for the face of God, God will eventually answer you at last. Don't give up in anything you ask. Amen. What advice now would you... The advice I would give her to our viewers is that they must not resist in knocking, knocking for whatever request they are asking for. This phone was stolen from in, in, in Bosma by the Maupe people. He spent about three days and God eventually brought it back to me. So the same thing happened to this Pakistan and God gave it back to me again. I want to praise God for that. Hallelujah. 
and for many of you that have lost one thing or the other on this mountain we don't suffer loss whatever you have lost this week you will recover it I say this week you will recover it shout a believing amen freedom for all final family greeting in the name of Jesus my name is sister Zanelli uh, two months ago my mother, she was sick, and she attended a deliverance service. Papa released a word upon her, and immediately my mother received the word and took it. Um, after that, now, as I'm speaking now, my mother, she's completely killed. She's completely healed. She can walk. She came here. She didn't walk when she was coming here for deliverance. Now, she's completely healed. I want to thank God for what he has done into my mother's life, into my family. And I also want to thank Papa. I also I want to thank God for using Papa to heal my mother completely. Amen. Celebrate Jesus. And my second testimony, uh, beginning of this year, prophet said we must write um, our prayer point. On my prayer point, I asked God to bless me with a car. And indeed, as I'm speaking now, God bless me with a new car. Amen. Hallelujah. What, what advice do you have for the people? Um, the advice that I can give people is like um, delay is not is de not denial denial. So you must put your trust unto God. And I want to say more more cars are coming into the choir. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Listen, she was busy serving. She was engaged in the mystery of kingdom service. I think she's in the choir. And God located her. Why? Because she was serving. Anytime you serve, you will be serviced. As you engage in service unto the Lord, that which you have written, the God of my Father will give to you. I say the God of my Father will give it to you. We have a testimony here. That was sent said good day prophet my name is Ruben Makombe I wanted to give my testimony today but I went for an interview before I bought my car I asked prophet if that was the right car to buy prophet said to me it's the right car but he can see too much soft sea uh, after the car so I went to buy it three years ago then on the 29th of October on the 29th being Friday September Friday night my Toyota 2.5 D4D was stolen by one of my colleagues who took advantage because he knows everything about me and we, are, and we were also working and staying together so on this day I left my car unlocked the keys and my belongings inside I went somewhere for 30 minutes when I came back I saw him disappear with my car I searched everywhere but he was nowhere to be found I called tracker no help I called the police no help prophet was my last trusted hope I called prophet Sam but it didn't go through then I sms him on whatsapp telling him what happened prophet replied God is going to bring back your car in 17 hours if you want to shout amen say amen my car in my car was my bible anointing oil and my not my blood sticker then Saturday morning I was exhausted thinking that my car is gone forever I received a call from the police saying my car has been seen in La, La Palale Aru 110 on Botswana but the driver had an accident and died on the spot
I went there. I saw my car badly damaged body, but the whole engine, radiator, chassis, and the gear bus is fine. No leak at all. So I want to thank God for using my prophet, Prophet Samuel, for being there for us 24 hours. All you need is a word from the prophet. Papa said his car will be found. And I remember my father saying that anybody that stole your car, that person will die by accident. And just as the oracle of God said, the same person that stole the car and wanted to go and sell it in another country, he did not survive. May I prophesy to you, anyone that has taken anything that belongs to you under the grace of my father that one will go down to the grave for your sake anyone that have collected what belongs to you and you are crying bitterly this week that same person will go down to the grave for you if you believe it shout a thunderous amen The second written testimony here says, I am Sister M. I was sick to an extent that I could not stand up. I could not stand upright. I was prayed for. And now I'm completely fine. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate Jesus. I want us to rise up on our feet. No man can do these things except the God of my Father. I want us to lift up holy hands and begin to appreciate the Lord for all that he has done. Let's return back all the glory as a church to him. Remember, a closed mouth is a closed destiny. Lift up your hands and begin to appreciate him. Return Father, back all the glory. Return Lord, back all the glory, Lord, all the testimony back to him. We give you the he is a wondrous we God. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful work. We thank you, Father, for what you do. Lord, we give all the glory. In we give you Jesus' all you precious name. Father, we thank you once again. Thank you for what you are doing in the ministry of your servant, my father, Prophet Samuel Akimbojuse. Thank you for what you are doing on this mountain. No man can do these things. Lord, as a church, as a family, we return back all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration to you. And we say, may your name be glorified forever in Jesus' name. Let the church shout a believing amen. amen. Jam your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we all happy to be in his presence this morning? The Bible says, in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Tell someone next to you this morning, before you leave this place, tell him or her, before you leave this place, your joy will overflow. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We want to appreciate God who have made it possible for us to be alive today and among those living so that we worship his holy name. We are all welcome to his presence in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to welcome especially this morning all those that are worshiping with us for the first time. If this is your first Sunday of worshiping with us, can you please rise on your feet wherever you are and take a step of faith forward to the altar here. All the visitors, Hallelujah. Let's take a step of it forward. Let's come out here. We want to see your face. We want to welcome you in our own way. Can we come out, all the visitors? Let's come out here, all the visitors. Let's come out here, all the visitors.
believe God that has brought you here this morning we meet with you at the point of your needs in the, after the service please don't be in a hurry the form that is being given unto you please let's complete the form to you after the service God bless you as you worship with us hallelujah dependent nation hallelujah and throughout this month we'll be celebrating the nation of Nigeria remember when we had our old place the reason why we do this we celebrate the nation is to give glory unto the almighty God on behalf of that nation so throughout this month we'll be celebrating the nation of Nigeria and by the grace of God next week Sunday the consular general of Nigeria will be in our midst hallelujah amen Nigerians are we in the house all other nations let's get ready we are kick starting it again from this month and it will continue like that so for the month of November the nation that is doing independence let's get ready as we will celebrate as well hallelujah if you look at so many things that you are seeing here more information will come on those things later hallelujah God bless you in the name of Jesus on the 21st of this month is the encounter with mercy. And we'll be doing two things together that same day. That same day on the 21st, our choir, the first of this month by 12 o'clock, it's on a Saturday. So we'll be meeting here by 12. It's double celebration. Hallelujah. By the grace of the Almighty God, this coming Saturday on the 13th of October is our men's conference. All the men, let's prepare for it. After the service, we'll be meeting again to finalize it. And our mommies, we know by the time we see you, we know you will always support us. Hallelujah. So let's support all the men. Next week, Saturday, is a men conference by 10 o'clock in the morning. Hallelujah. On Friday, it was announced last week that the businessmen and women, career men and women, should meet. Our father passed this information across to us. Every businessman or woman in the house, or career man or woman in the house, there's going to be a covenant meeting with our father once in a month. And it's going to be every last Friday of the month. So let's take note of this, not this coming Friday anymore. Every last Friday of the month, between the hour of 6 p.m. and 12 a.m., businessmen and women, let's take note, career man and woman. It's a covenant meeting every last Friday of the month. Our father will be meeting with businessmen and women, career men and women, from 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. It's going to be six hours with the Almighty God. And the result will follow in the name of Jesus. So tomorrow, our business, Roma regular business meeting still remain between the hour of 7 and 8 every Monday. We come to commit the week to the hands of God. So join us tomorrow for another edition of Business and Professional Prayer Meeting. How many of us read the Bible reading for last week? Are we following? This week, let's write now. We'll be reading from the book of John chapter 9 to 21. John 9 to 21. reading throughout this week from John 9 to 21 and then we'll be reading as well Acts of Apostle chapter 1 and 2 I will take it again John chapter 9 to chapter 21 and Acts of Apostle chapter 1 and chapter 2. 
We should not read alone. Let's meditate on this word of God. And I know God has something for you and I. God bless you. If there's any other announcement, we let us know. Shalom. Jump those hands to Jesus. Keep jamming those hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to call on this great nation. I know we have Nigerians in the house. And fortunately for me, I'm from that great nation. And we can see today that Nigeria is 57 years. The number five means grace. And the number seven means perfection. So the nation Nigeria is perfected in the name of Jesus. Join hands together as I bring the presentation to you by the Nigerians. Put those hands together as they come to the front. Keep jamming those hands. Keep jamming those hands. Jam those hands. Jam those hands. Keep jamming those hands. Nigerians, jam those hands. South African, jam those hands. I am a Nigerian. I'm a born Nigerian. I'm a native of Nigeria. I'm a true rare breed of Nigeria. I love Nigeria and I'm proud to be called a Nigerian. My origin is Nigerian. My blood type is Nigerian. My accent speaks Nigerian. My skin color depicts Nigerian. My heart beats and bleeds for Nigerians. My pains explains the complaints of Nigerians. My hopes see a better Nigerian. And my faith profess that Nigerian. Yes, I am a blessed Nigerian. My vision, my mission, my decisions, my actions, my passions and associations describe the worth of Nigerians. Yes, I am a foreign Nigerian. I am a vulnerable Nigerian. I am a responsible Nigerian. I am a proven Nigerian. I am a diplomat of Nigeria. I am a decorated citizen of Nigeria. I am an indisputable Nigerian. I am an indispensable Nigerian. And I am an indestructible Nigerian. Yes, a Nigerian with a difference. A Nigerian with direction and passion. A Nigerian possession with the obsession and obligation to fashion Nigerian to become an enviable and divisible nation among other nations in ramifications and glorifications. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the President of Nigeria, the President of Zimbabwe, the President of South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, this, mess, this meeting was arranged on request by the African Union pending a decision in the Security Council of the United Nations on the current situation in Nigeria. President from Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe. President Jacob Zwart. The elder statesman, President Robert Mugabe. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, as you can see, that is my friend, my friend, uh, the president of South Africa, President Jacob Zuma. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, before, before I say anything, uh, hey, hey, I would like to call the eldest president in the world. Uh, to, 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 to talk to us, President Robert Mugabe. Over to you, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you. It is my honor. <laughs> Honestly, being the eldest president in the world over, at the helm of the government for more than 30 years, almost 40 years now. <laughs> we have been to the United Nations, the Geneva Conference, the war in DRC, 
South Africa, we have got all the experience. These boys you see in the UK, the Cameroon, and the small boy coming today, the Trump, they are new in their debutants in this game. They are debutants. We have come, you know, in Zimbabwe. They were saying, yes, yeah, the smugglers are moving away. Uh, I was calling, talking to my colleague. You know the number of wives, so don't know about that. I was talking to my colleague. Uh, in the region, as a southern African state, we have got Sadiq. I did not join Sadiq. I formed Sadiq. His wife, we only changed her now. She was at the helm of AU, you know that. I understand they want to make a woman president. But I was talking to him, Zuma, and told Zuma, don't relinquish your power. Stay there. I'm still there. We have come, these people, when they see me, eh? when they see Mugabe me, uh, I'm a lion. I was talking to Trump in the United States. I told him, these challenges you are facing is just but a matter of this. You are comfortable. Mm, I think even though I just came back from London for my sickness, but I'm fine now. Mm. <laughs> His Excellency Buhari, thank you for Africa. Yes. We will enjoy this journey. His Excellency, <coughs> His, His Excellency, we understand you have cultural clashes. We have our own. It was called apartheid. The white nation oppressed the black nation. But we went. We had to run outside South Africa and go and hide in this president, the old man, who ran down his own economy. He's talking about me, but he has his own problem. As we speak, <coughs> he does not even have currency. He come to me. We still have private white boer army mm. to come and help you with your cultural clashes. Mr. President, I have my own problem. <clears throat> How can they want me to step down? When I have eight wives, I have Duduzani. Who's going to look after my children? Ah. My president, we will talk after this meeting. Ah, ah. My president, what's happening now? We want Biafra. We want Biafra. We want Biafra. These are the things. Uh, <coughs> we want that. Biafra. We want 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 Biafra. Yeah, Lieutenant General. Yeah, Bratai. What are you doing? I'm seeing some nonsense here. Bring we the TF and clear these people from here. We want you can see, my, my, my president, these are the things I'm, I'm facing here. You can see, I, they are killing me gradually. We Every month Biafra. I go to London, I come back. We these want are Biafra. the people. You see? I see my president. We want Biafra. We if you want need Biafra. help, my president, you can send WhatsApp. 
You can send email. You can say you can call we me. Want I will Biafra. send my army. We want Biafra. We want Biafra. My president. I wanted to I wanted to reprimand you. To reprimand. You are going back to London and I said, but remember, Zimbabwe have got the strongest, intelligent, fitful army. Yes. Hey, hey. This was a very fruitful meeting. Thank you. Please, Konbi. Mr. President, now we this God. to dance. It will take away the stress. I am for her Because I'm in love with this God. Originally from Nigeria. Have it a lecture. Ready to be in Nigeria. Originally from Nigeria. I'm in a lecture. Proud to be here in Nigeria, yeah. I don't want to be here no in South Africa. Come on, come on, come hey, on. Come I don't want to be here in that no come on. more. It took a bit of a lot of Nigeria. I never did it. I never helped pastor. Hey. Nigeria is a very interesting country that every kind of character you'll find. But we thank God for that. You see, when the men in those days tried to build the Toal of Babel and God saw the cooperation and the unity between men, he said, no, if we allow people to build, they will get to us. Let's scatter their language. Before I called the next assignment, some time ago in 1914, a lady came along the coast and was beaten with so much mosquito. When the lady was beaten, then he said to the people that were with her that this place should be called Niger area. That is where the name Nigeria come from. And that lady is called Flora Cho, the girlfriend to Lord Lugard in 1914. So celebrate Nigerians. Put those hands as I bring Pastor Edit to the front to come and take it. Praise the Lord. It's time to give unto the Lord. Do we have titles in the house? Please, if you are a titer in the house, can you please stand up and come forward? All the titers in the house. Praise the Lord. Praise our Master Jesus. Viewers all over the world, 
If you are paying your tithe on this altar, join us to receive the blessings of the week. Amen. May we please raise up our hands, right hands, as we pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your holy name, our Father. We worship you, we adore you. We glorify your holy name, our God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, here are your children, my God. I present them before you, my Father. Father, as they refuse to rob you, my God, as they render their faithfulness unto you, irrespective of their financial need, they did not rob you. They knew that there is something that belonged to you, and they brought it before you. Therefore, I pray for them, my God. By the grace upon my husband, Samuel Akibodushe, I declare unto them, their finances is restored in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, you've said in your word, in the book of Romans 2, verse 25, that circumcisions are observed for those who value the law. Therefore, my God, I pray unto this one. If there is any law that has been bringing obstacles into their finances, right now it is broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, they will never know any financial lack in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray for them. That if there is any law that has been refusing their finances to flow right now, may they receive freedom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Financial freedom in Jesus' name. Amen. Health freedom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Career freedom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Business freedom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, may they testify that you have done it into their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Christians, thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, those who want to fulfill the law, but they don't have finances, they don't have money, they don't have jobs, right now, I declare jobs unto their life in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive your job in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Your finances is blessed. Your finances is restored. Your finances is uplifted. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Please, can we please package our offering as they are going back to their seats? Can we please package our offering? Praise Master Jesus. Uh, I will read from the John 3.16. In John 3.16, Bible says that God loved the world very much that he sent his only one and only son to come and die for us. Because he have looked at this world and see that people are suffering. Then he said to himself, what can I do to set my people free? And he said to himself, the only way that he will set the people of this world free is by sending his only son to come and die for us. Why? Because he loves us so much. So if we love God this morning, can we please put our hands in our pockets, in our beds, and take out an offering that you will know that we provoke God to, pro to bless us this morning. Praise Master Jesus. Can we all please stand up as the choir will give us a very nice song that we go with this. Praise Master Jesus.
Transform my life forever. Open your mouth and talk to him. Within three days, let it be a miracle. Let it be a miracle that will transform my life. Let it be a miracle within three days. Within three days, let it be a miracle. Let it be a miracle. Let there be a miracle that we come from Within three days, let there be a miracle. Father, within three days, let there be a miracle. 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 You pray this one again. Why I say you should hold yourself treachery. We have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. The Trinity. You will talk to him this morning. Lord, let the unity that you have in heaven, the unity of the Trinity, let that unity enter me and lift me today. I don't know if you understand the prayer. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, where God wants to form a man, say, Let us make a man. Which means there's a unity that forms a man. We will call the, the power of that unity. It will come and refresh and renew what you have created. I don't know if you understand the prayer. Yes, sir. 
Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Let the power of unity. Let the power of unity. In heaven. In heaven. Let it come down now. Let it come down now. And transform. Oh my life! Open your mouth and talk to him. Let the power of unity. We have a lot of combat and shot from a lot of smoke. Let it come down, let it come down. The power of unity. Let it come down, let it come down. 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 The power of unity. The power of unity. The power of unity. The power of unity. Let it come down this morning. Just for my life. Let it come down. 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 The power of unity. Let it come down in my life. Let it come down this morning. Let it come down. Let it come down. Let it come down. Let it come down. The power of unity. Let it come down. You pray this one again, two more prayer, I hand over to the choir, let the minister will come and bless us. Every any unity of the enemy that has stagnated me in one position, any unity of the kingdom of darkness that stagnated me in one place, let this unity of Trinity break that unity this morning. Amen. I don't know if you understand the prayer. Any unity from any kingdom. From any altar, from any shrine, from anywhere, unite together against my lifting that stagnates me in one position. Let the unity of the God the Father, of the God the Son, yes. of the God the Holy Ghost, yes. let it break that unity today. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready? Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Any unity. Any unity. For any kingdom of darkness. For any kingdom of darkness. Any unity. Any unity. Of the enemy. Of the enemy. That stagnant me one place. That stagnant me one place. Let the unity be picked up. Let the unity be broken now. Open your mouth and talk to me. Let the unity be broken now. I command the unity. Let the unity be broken now. Let the unity be broken now. Let the unity be broken now. I command the unity be broken. Let it 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 be broken. In the unity of the enemy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can leave your hand now. Hands now. Then you pray this one. 
The Bible says in the book of Genesis, when Abraham built his father's house for 75 years, but a day came, God looked at him. He said, My son, you have dwelt long, so long in your father's house. It is time for you to move to your promised land. I don't know how long you have been in that position. There's a word that is coming this morning. Yes! And that word is taking you, bringing you out from your father's house yes! to your promised land. Amen. I don't know how long yes! you have been in that position. Yes! I don't know yes! how long you are expressing that sickness. Yes! I don't know how long the affliction it has been there. I have a good news for you this yes! morning. There's a word that is coming this yes. morning. There's a word that is coming this yes. morning that will take you from grace to grace. Yes. There is a word that is coming this morning yes. that will take you from your father's house to your promised land. Yes. There is a word yes. that is coming this morning yes. that will take you yes. from the back seat to the front seat of life. Yes. There is a word that is coming this morning yes. that will take you from zero to hero. last one, I hand over to the choir. The prayer is this, Lord, in any way I have been tied down, whether in my village, whether in my father's house, whether from the place of my bed, in any way I have been tied down, whether from the altars, from the kingdoms, from the Shunai, this morning, yes. I want to come out. Yes. Power! I come out. Power. The devil is in trouble. This one, I want to do what? Come I out. want to come out. Let that same voice, I call the voice that located Abraham, the voice of authority. The idols in Abraham's family, he had been silenting him for years. But when that voice speak, just once, not twice, just once, the voice of the idol was silent forever. Yes! You will tell him, let that voice that liberate Abraham from his father's house to his promised land, let that voice locate me this morning. Amen. Let that voice do what? Locate, locate me, me this, this morning. morning. You will pray. Right now. Let that voice. You got to make it two prayer in one. Two in one. Let that voice of liberation locate me this morning for my liberation. Two. I come out from anywhere I have been caged. I come out from my father's house. Yes. I come out from my village. Yes. I come out from my sickness. Yes. I come out from my poverty. Yes. I come out from my failure. Yes. I come out from my shame. Yes. I come out from my delay. Yes. I come out from disappointment. Yes. I come out from struggle. Yes. I come out from every affliction. Yes. Open your mouth and begin to talk to him. Begin to come out. Begin to come out. Begin to come out. I come out 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 I Get out as I welcome the freedom voice. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. La voz, Santa, la voz. 
mighty man of war, lion of Judah. We bow down and worship you, Yahweh, Yahweh. Come and do what only you can do. Mighty men of war, lion of Judah. Oh, 
worship you this morning Lord we give you glory we give you honor we give you the praise yes Lord we worship you we bless your holy name we glorify you we worship 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 you. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you this morning. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. We worship your name. We worship you, God Almighty. You alone are worthy. Yes, Lord, we worship you. Father, we worship you this morning. We worship you. 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 Lord, we back on she calariaba. Lord, we back on us. Reba on she calariaba. Sheke. Roma calariaba. Sheke. Lord, we worship you. You alone are worthy. We back on us. Sheke. Lord, we back on she cal. Roma on she calariaba. We mark a bosheke, low we bosheka, we mark on sheke de riaba, roba kos, we mark on sheke, low we bosheka la riaba, roba kos sheke, re mark on sheka la riaba bos, low we worship you, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you the praise, mark on la riaba bos, we mark on sheka la riaba. We worship you, Lord. We thank you this morning. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you the praise. You alone are worthy. You alone are mighty, O oh God. 
we thank you Father we thank you Lord we bless and we glorify you we thank you Lord we thank you thank you Father thank you Jesus thank you Father Lord we thank you we give you glory yes Lord Thank you, Jesus. God, be your oh, God, be your oh, You are the Lord. Of Oh, my God. 
Father, we thank you. We honor you this morning. We worship you. We bless your holy name. We thank you, Father. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever you are the same yesterday today and forever you are the same yesterday today and forever you are the same Yesterday, today, today, and forever, and forever. You, are you are the same. Yesterday, today, and forever, you are the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the same yesterday, today. Forever, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the same yesterday. Today and forever. Hallelujah. Somebody give Jesus a hand of appreciation. Hallelujah. 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 Can we just please appreciate Jesus once more with a clap offering? Hallelujah. 
indeed he is the same yesterday today and forever my lord changeth not his god almighty the beginning and the end the author and the finisher of our faith he is God Almighty there is no one like him for him alone liveth for him alone is Lord for he alone is the king of kings his name is Jehovah Jehovah Rapha Jehovah Elohim God Almighty Jehovah Nisi the Lord our banner we thank you this afternoon Lord in you we move in you we live in you we have our being on our own lord we are nothing but we are what we are because of you for that reason lord we saw it fit this afternoon to say there is no one like you you alone are god you alone our Lord, our God. Apart from you, Lord, there is no any other God that we know. Only you, Jesus, we recognize in our life as the Lord of Lord, as the King of Kings. You, God Almighty, ancient of days, we bless you this afternoon. We worship your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Shall we give Jesus another hand of appreciation? Hallelujah. You may please take your seat. Hallelujah. This morning, I just want to appreciate God for giving us this opportunity to come and sit in his presence and to feast at his table. Hallelujah. In absentia, I just want to appreciate our Father in the Lord, Prophet Samuel Akibonduse. I know Many of us, we may not know this, but this is what I want you to know. Physically, he's not here. But one thing I can tell you is that his heart, his spirit where he is now, is in this place. Hallelujah. May the Lord continue to bless him. May the Lord continue to lift him up for us. You may not know this. This is the gift that the Lord has blessed us with, especially in South Africa and in Fano. Hallelujah. People like our father, the prophet, are very scarce. Many of us, we may not know this, but if you can ask people who watch Fano TV, they will tell you what you and I are enjoying. Hallelujah. Shall we appreciate God for the life of the prophet? I would like also to celebrate our mother in the house. For prophet, 
to stand like the way he's standing is because there is a woman behind him, supporting him, standing by him. <clears throat> Brethren, you may not know this. If there's a woman who knows the tears of prophet, it's our mother, Mama Eunice, in the house here. He may not cry here in front of us, but in the closest where Mama is, if you can come closer to her, she will tell you the tears that the man of God has shed on her shoulder. And for that, we like to say as a church, Mama, may the Lord continue to bless you. May the Lord continue to strengthen you. Whatever grace you need to stand behind the man of God, May the Lord grant you that grace in abundance in the name of Jesus. I also want to appreciate our elders. You see, one thing that you cannot understand is this. Our father, prophet Samuel, cannot do this work alone. He needs men and women around him to support him. And this is the work that our elders are doing. Our elders, we appreciate God for you. May the Lord continue to increase more wisdom and knowledge in your life. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We also have my fellow pastors, our resident pastors, my big brother. For me, it's my big brother. Don't call him your big brother. Pastor Barnabas in our midst. Can we appreciate this man for us? <laughs> Hallelujah. Sir, your work shall not be in vain. Whatever you're doing, God will reward you. Hallelujah. We have also my other big brother, as a resident pastor, Pastor Victory. Can we celebrate God for his life? Hallelujah. You know, is somebody when you look at him is very quiet, very reserved, but he is a life wire for Jesus. Hallelujah. Fellow pastors, we really appreciate God for you. I also want to appreciate all the workers, the ushers. If ever there are people who are going through a lot in this church, are the ushers. You know, sometimes if you listen to what people say about the ushers, you will feel pity for them. But I pray that the Lord will give you the strength, the grace to continue despite all the challenges you face in the name of Jesus. The other department which I know, in fact, this department, almost everybody hates this department. The protocol. <laughs> we thank God for your work. We thank God for what you're doing. Sometimes what you're doing, we may not understand it, but only God knows what you're doing. And God will reward you in Jesus. Hallelujah. Shall we please rise up on our feet as we study the word of God? Viewers all over the world, wherever you're watching us from, I would like you to do likewise wherever you are. It is our custom, our tradition in this church that every time when we read the word of God, 
we rise up on our feet to honor God. So wherever you are watching us from, it's on Fano app, please, you are welcome to join us. This is Freedom for All Nation. And I want to know, tell you this morning, as you are watching on that television, God has got something for you this morning in the name of Jesus. Don't switch it off because there is a weight that the Lord has given unto me. The weight that will transform your life. Key into that weight. Continue watching that television. Allow God to speak to you. And I want to assure you, whatever we are enjoying here, you will enjoy it as well in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 30. We are going to read from verse 25. It reads as follows. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, send me away that I may go to my own place and to my country. Verse 26. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you and let me go. For you know my service which I have done for you. Verse 27. And Laban said to him, Please stay if I have found favor in your eyes, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Please take note of that verse. Then he said, Name your wages and I will give it. So Jacob said to him, you know how I have served you and how your livestock has been with me. For what you had before I came was little and it has increased to a great amount. The Lord has blessed you since my coming and now when shall I also provide for my own house? So he said, what shall I give you? And Jacob said, you shall not give me anything. If you will do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep your flocks. Let me pass through all your flock today, removing from all the spectacles the spectacle and spotted sheep and all the brown ones among the lambs and the spotted and the speckled among the goats. And this shall be my wages. So my righteousness will answer for me in time to come when the subject of my wages comes before you, everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the lamp will be considered stolen if it is with me. And Laban said, Oh, that it were according to your word. So he removed that day the male goats that were speckled and spotted, all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, everyone that had some white in it and all brown ones among the lambs and gave them into the hand of his sons. Take note of that. He then put three days journey between himself and Jacob and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flock. Now Jacob took for himself rows of green poplar and of almond and chestnut trees peeled white strips in them and exposed the white which was in the rods and the rods which he peeled he set before the flocks in the gutters in the watering trough where the flock came to drink so that they should conceive when they came to drink so the flock conceived before the rods and the flocks brought forth streaked, speckled and spotted then Jacob separated the lambs and made the flocks face towards the strict and all brown in the flock of Laban but he put his own flock by themselves and did not put them with Laban's flock verse 43 thus the man became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks female and male servants camel and donkeys hallelujah may the lord bless the reading of this word father here i am this afternoon 
I have no word of my own. But Lord, here are your people. Here are your children. Whatever Lord you have for them, Father, let them hear your word and let your word transform them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, you may please take your seat. Hallelujah. I am going to share with you on the message entitled, O oh Lord, visit my work. O oh Lord, visit my work. Hallelujah. Because of our time, we could not read everything that I wanted us to read. But from the passage where we have read, we have read about the man. I want you to know that others started fighting inside the womb. He fought with his brother Esau in the womb. And he won the battle in the womb. Many of us will remember before he was born a prophecy, a word came out that you will conceive twins but there will be a battle in the womb but the younger one will overcome the older one. If you look in families today the same battles are still continuing where you find that the younger ones are the ones who are taking the lead and because of that there are so many battles haven't you seen a situation where you are hated among all your brethren and you are asking yourself why because in you there is something special which makes you different from all the other brethren. And you never became special because you chose to be special. All this is the doing of the Lord himself. And therefore, the sooner you understand this, the better and the better for you to lessen the battles that you are facing today. Many of us, we are facing challenges. We are facing battles among brethren because we don't understand one thing. The reason why God has lifted you up among your brethren is not because you are better than them. But God saw it fit that you can be an instrument of lifting other brethren in the family. The day you fail to understand that, the battles that you will fight will never come to an end. But when you understand that I am what I am, because of God's grace upon my life and the purpose is for me to lift other brethren the sooner you understand that that will make you humble what is causing many challenges in our lives is pride the mother heard what was going to happen and the mother advised Jacob the younger one and said hey I heard that your brother want to take his birthright from you. Remember he sold it to you. Therefore, go and do this and this for you to inherit the blessing. Jacob did as the mother told. The father came, he bowed down before the father and the father said, something is not right here. The voice is of Jacob. 
But the hand, the skin, is of Esau. I don't understand what is going on. And Jacob said, I am the firstborn. And many of us, we think he was lying. He was not lying. He was right. Because Esau sold his birthright already. If you think Jacob was a crook like the way many of us we used to know. No, Esau was a crook. He sold his birthright to Jacob. But when the time of blessing came, he wanted to rob so when Jacob said, I am the firstborn, he was right. He wanted to inherit that which belongs to him. Hallelujah. So now, after the blessing, that is where the battle now started. When Esau came, he said, here I am, father, I'm back. And the father said, no. Whatever I had, I have released it to Jacob and he said indeed he shall be blessed hallelujah now this is what is happening Isaac did not give Jacob money Isaac did not give Jacob anything tangible but he released his blessing. He released word. He spoke into the future of Jacob. And he said, indeed, what I have spoken will come to pass. Nobody will reverse it. When Israel came and said, Father, don't you have just a little? Isaac said, I don't have anything left. Whatever I had, I gave it to your younger brother. And indeed, you will serve him. But if you fight, you break his cord from your neck. The battle started. But now, what happened? The mother said, because of all these battles in the family, we don't see it wise that the two brethren should stay together under the same roof. Rather, let us take one in exile. Many of us, we have heard our father in the Lord, he said he went into exile while he was four years old. And to many of us, it may not make sense but God knew what he was doing. Brethren, that is why if you are not wise, there are times in order for you to be safe and your destiny to be safe, you need to physically relocate. Don't say, this is my village, I was born and bred here. They will kill you before you fulfill your destiny. My grand grandfather was born here. He lived here. He died here. Who am I to live? If Jesus himself had to relocate physically to Egypt, what about you? Some of us here will receive prophecies. Please, for the time being, don't set your foot in your village. When you go back home, I can't come. My prophet said I must not set my food in that village. You are telling your enemies. The secret which was supposed to protect you because you lack understanding. Instead of saying, eh, don't worry, I will see you soon. That's all. There are certain things that the man of God cannot explain to you. He will just speak a word and say, can you do me a favor? For the next five months, please don't send money home. Don't call anybody home. Don't visit home. Just that place. 
Those battles you will never win. Some battles, they just need you to relocate physically for a while. Hallelujah. Now Jacob relocated. On his way, the Bible says, he became hungry, it was dark, now he had to sleep. As he was sleeping, he now started to see a dream. Brethren, let me tell you this. There are certain things about you which you need to know about yourself. If you are in a particular place, it will never be unfolded to you until you relocate. Certain destinies will remain closed as long as you are under any environment. But once you relocate from that environment, that is when your eyes will be open. You will start to discover things about yourself which you didn't know. Jacob saw something that he never, he never knew before. And the Bible says when he woke up, he said, indeed, this ground, this place, this is the gates of heaven. I heard what God said to me. And then he said, will go with me, be with me, protect me, until I return back to my father's house safe. Out of everything that my God will bless me with, I will give him my tenth. He set a pillar of stones and then he left. Hallelujah. Now, this is where I'm coming from. Brethren, I want us to understand something. Many of us, we received blessings. Many of us, we received prophecies. But the problem that we are having is the manifestation of the prophecy. Why my prophecy is not manifesting? The blessings that was spoken and declared upon my life is not coming into manifestation. And that is the reason why we are here this morning. Hallelujah. Brethren, I have realized one thing. God is not what? A magician. But today, there is a tendency among the believers. When we look at God, we think God is a magician. And God is not a magician. God is real and God is practical. Physical things, he addresses them likewise. Spiritual things, he addresses them likewise. And we need to understand this. Hallelujah. Many of us, words has been spoken into our lives. Within two, three years, you will have a car. Within five years, you will have some making. Sin is another thing. The manifestation thereof is something else. And when it comes to manifestation of your blessings, the manifestation of the prophecy, you and I must come to a point where we cooperate with God, we become co-workers with God to make the manifestation a reality. Hallelujah. One of the most important things that I have realized that God uses to uplift men and women is work. That we should do for living. That we should do with your hands. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to get this very well. We are living in a time whereby I have realized one thing. If there are people who are ignorant in this whole world, most of them are the so-called Christians. 
Christians know how to pray. Christians know how to come to church every day. But Christians do not know how to make the blessings of God become real in their lives. And this is one area where they lack. They think that every declaration they receive will just come to pass like that. They neglect that all of us we need to work. We need tell Christians to do something with their own hands. No. They just think by sitting on the chair and say, bara, 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 bara. I declare riches come. I declare it's all. You need to do something with your hands. Don't sit down and expect that God will just come like that without doing anything. All of us, we have to do something with our own hands. Prayer does not buy car. Money by car. Prayer does not be the church. Money be the church. This church, it was built by hands of men. And that shows you that one way or another, Somebody somewhere must start using his hands and start to work. That is why Paul said, because he realized there was a certain attendance in another church where Christians will come down, wake up in the morning, come study the Bible, pray and go to sleep. And they were dying of hunger. Paul said, we don't need such type of lazy people in the church. He who does not work must not even eat. Because for you to eat, you must work. No prayer. But Christians, prayer for eat, prayer for food, prayer for clothes, prayer for house, prayer for car. No, sir. You need to work for your car. You need to work for your house. Whatever you need, which is physically, you need to work for it. Hallelujah. I'm not saying you must not pray. Prayer is important. There are certain things that prayer can do. But there are certain things that your hands must do before you see the manifestation. Many of us, we are making a man of God look like a liar. He will come and declare on the altar and say, I declare, oh, I, I see distinctions. We say, amen. When you go home, you close your book, you don't study. The man of God has said, he declared that distinction. And you are the first person after the exams, you are, you are saying, you remember what prophet said last year? He said distinction. I want to see those distinctions. How will you see the distinction if you don't study? Because you study, the distinction will come. Because God will work on that which you know. The Holy Spirit will remind you of the things that you studied. As you study, he will open you. He will open your mind for you to be wiser and to understand the contents in the book. But if you don't study, even if you are the number one prayer warrior, you will fail. And that is not God's fault. It's your fault. Hallelujah. When I read the Bible, there's something that baffled me. Genesis chapter 2. You know, it's the summary. Chapter 2. It starts now to want to give the description of how God now started to do things. The manifestation of 
what God said. In chapter 2, it will tell you that this is how God formed. Now, it shows you the how part of it. But one, it says God said, God said, God said. But two, is the how God did it. I don't know if you understand what I'm, where I'm going. In chapter 1, declaration. Chapter 2, how it was done. Now, there is one sentence that I picked up. It says, this is how God formed the heavens and the earth before man was created. And the Bible says, the earth was plain. There was no herb, no tree, nothing on the earth. There was no man to do what? To till the ground. Tilling means there was no man to work on the land. But brethren, Christians, they don't see that scripture. When we read, we will never see it. From the creation, man was meant to till the ground. You were meant to work for you to eat. You were not meant to pray. No. If you want to eat, even before man was cursed, you and I were to till the ground. And that is a lie that the devil is trying to say, no, you were not even supposed to work. Everything was created for you to just enjoy. The Bible says no, because man was not yet created to till the ground and the rain has not fallen on the ground. Hallelujah. Now, listen to this. Now, the Bible says God formed man out of the ground. Not so? How many of you are aware of that? He formed man out of what? Of the ground. After forming man out of the ground, he breathed his spirit into man and man became what? A living soul. Am I right? Now listen to this. After man sinned, God came back again and God said, now the land that you are supposed to till, I have cursed it. Now this is the curse. He said, instead of this land to grow seed that will bring food, it will start to bring thistles. Unwanted vegetation will now come out. But still, you as a man, because you come from the ground, you will need to work till the ground because you are ground. In order for you to survive, you must eat the earth. Hello? Your body needs the ground to survive. That thing that you call it yourself, you call it food, fruit, to survive. But the spiritual part of you need the spiritual food from God. And in order for you to have the material things that this your body need, you need to work. Hallelujah. Are you following me? Brethren, let me tell you this maybe you will, to make you understand. I became a pastor at a very early age. And uh, I said, God, I'm going. As I was a pastor, preaching, doing everything, sometimes I remember there was this incident after preaching powerful sermon. I would see the members. It was raining that day. I will never forget it. All the members just got into their cars. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Now I had to take my Bible and make a cover. Until I got home. And on Sunday, you'll hear the members. I want to bless God. God has blessed me with a car, like the sister who testified about the car. 
The truth is, yes, God bless her with a car, but she's paying for the car. I don't even understand what I'm trying to say. It never came for free. She's blessing God. You just say, somebody bless. This sister was blessed with a car. I want to be like her. Go deeper. Ask her, how did God bless you? Go deeper. If you ask her, she'll say, my sister, I've been working. I receive a salary raise. And now I realize that I don't have many credits. I can afford a car. I went, I bought a car. But when we come here, we give you a summary. And it's this summary that is killing many people. The summary in the church. Summary of testimony. is the one that is killing the church. That is why you see other people, they will even go 40 days and 40 nights. I want to be like that sister. God must bless with me a car. No, sir. It's not fasting. It's work. <laughs> work. I know we don't want to hear this. And this is life. This is that you need this to transform your life. No wonder Solomon said what as much as he desire, he gets nothing, and that desire end up killing the man. Many of us here, we are now ah, you know, I've been praying, I've been worshiping God. I, I God is not doing anything. I, I, I think now I've had declaration it's my time to quit the church. No, it's not about the church, it's about you. What are you doing? What are you doing? Hallelujah. Listen to this. When Jacob get to a place the Bible says he sat by the fountains and now he saw shepherd coming to feed the flock and then he saw these ladies coming and he saw men who were strong they were pushing these ladies aside and said hey we came first you are a woman you can't tell us anything and Jacob said I and fought for the ladies and said, hey, you cannot do this. I'm a man. He stood there and said, ladies, come. They fed the flock. That was hard labor. Not a God of my father. Fight for the ladies. Fight. No. He did not do that. The church, everything. God of my father, where are you? It's not everything that need God of your father. It is you. Hallelujah. He fought for the ladies. They fed the flock. They left home. Then the father said, Ah, why are you so early today? And the lady says, There's a man who gave us a helping hand. There's a man who did what? Asked God, God, send my helper. One day, you saw this old lady having two paper bags. She was carrying them heavily. Instead of you to just say, Mama, where are you going? Let me give you a helping hand. You just say, Oh, Mama, are they coming? Okay, God bless you. And you don't know that if you did something about the situation, that old lady that you saw as an old lady could have been a key to your breakthrough. That is why in life I have learned one thing. I will never look down upon any man, any woman, in spite of the condition they are. 
Because you may need to go far in life. Learn to value human life. Respect everyone. Whether it's old, whether it's your age, learn to respect. And do good to everybody. Don't look at face. Because you, know, you may never know where your helper is coming from. Some of us here, we are testimonies. The man that you claim to be your husband today is because you, even if you neglected to render help, you wouldn't be together today. You will still pray, oh God, give me my, send my husband. The same with us husband. The ladies that are in our life, we call them wives today, is because they rendered help in one way or another. I have never, ever, I speak and correction. Haven't you seen Christians? We like it a lot. Thank God. I just want to thank God, church. God has blessed me with a husband. And the church says, Amen. Now, have you ever sat down and say, just tell me, how did God bless you with this husband? Hello? If you now want to go into detail, you will hear, you know, I was walking in, then everything started. That is how it starts. That is how God works. That is how God works. Hello? Am I helping you? Brethren, those who are praying and asking God for marriage, Lord, bring my husband. Lord, bring, please come off the mountain of prayer. Go into the market. Women are not there. They are in the market. Please look, you look inside your head. Lord, I need my husband. Bring my husband. Yes, pray, finish. After praying, finish, package yourself. Go out where the husband are, where the women are. So now you expect God to come and hold with the hands and say, come, let me show you where your wife is. Come, let me show where your husband is. It does not work like that. That is not how God works. We need to understand this. There's a work that you need to do for God to lift you up. This man, the man said, go and call the man. The man came. And the man started to inquire, whose son are you? Then as they were communicating, he, he realized that they were a family. But when Jacob rendered service to the ladies he never knew that those are his cousins he never knew that they were a family that is why I am saying to you you will never know who will lift you up in destiny if you look down upon people That was a foreign land. He knew nobody there. But his act of assistance to foreigners that made him to secure a job. The Bible says from that day he became now the shepherd. He started serving. Now he started doing something. He started doing what? Working. Hallelujah. Brethren, make no mistake of it. The devil is so shrewd. People who are wise, if they want to make you suffer for the rest of your life, is to make sure you don't work. When you don't have anything to do, 
When you don't have anything to do to bring income into your life, you become miserable. That is why many of you here, you are crying and say, oh God, my work, everything is frustrated. I don't know what he's doing because they saw and they realized something that makes you to shine, to have a smile on your face is that job that you have. No wonder now they are trying everything to frustrate you out of that work. Because they know the day you are out, income stop, then suffering starts. Is that for you to be rich do it? It does not fit your level. But hunger knows no level. Poverty knows no level. Many of us, we are suffering today because what we are supposed to do, we look down upon it and say, me, I cannot do this. And you don't know if you can start small. Day. Jacob could have said, no, my God said he will bless me. Me becoming a shepherd this job is lower than my level. I know my level. I cannot be looking after flock. No, I've got great destiny. Many of us, the grace that we are celebrating today, if you can sit down and say, prophet, I want to spend a day with you. Tell me where you started. There are times where you say to you, I used to make bricks with my own hands. With great destiny that he carried, he started somewhere. And that is the problem that we have. We don't want to start small. We don't want to start somewhere. We expect that when I start tomorrow, I want to drive a Mercedes Benz. The problem of today is that the generation of today, they don't have patience. They don't understand that certain things in life is a process. It's not a magic. You have to go through a process. And you cannot blame them. You know, in our time, I used to know that when you want to cook pap, you take time. Nowadays, there's instant pap. You just put water, then you eat pap. And that is corrupting us. We want instant, instant, instant. Instant. Like this church. This church, when you look at it, many of us, we say it's only five years old. This church is not five years old. It's older than five years. It started at the age of four years old. When Prophet Samuel was taken to stay with his uncles at the age of four, that is when Fano started. You see all the training, all these things that you are enjoying, the scripture, the anointing, the ororo, it started in the house of our father there. So many, many, many years ago. Now you see manifestation. You say, if he did it in five years, I can start mine. Within two months, it will be big. Nalai. Hello? Mommy, I, I, I want to be like you. Wait for your time. Your time will come. It's a process. Pastor Peter, I want to be like you. You know where I come from. The battles that are fought, you don't know. You know, sometimes you say, Pastor Peter, I like the way you preach. How I so wish this, what I'm preaching here, it's not something that I just got from God. Oh, some is experience. 
the path that I've gone through. Not everything that comes from the pulpit is coming directly from God. And that is how Jesus wants it to be. You are supposed to preach about Jesus that you know. The one that you have tasted. The one that you have walked with. Don't say Jesus is, but when you have a headache, you take Panadol. You expect all others that you must lay hands on them, they must, they must get their healing. But you, when you are sick, Panadol. How do you know that God heals if he cannot heal you? Hello? God can make you rich. Yes, we want to see it in you. Why are you not rich? The time has come. That is why the Bible says, the people that know the Lord, their God, shall do great exploits. The time has come that as a church, we need to know God. Hallelujah. The man continues serving. The Bible says, as he was serving, as he was working, one day the man said, mm -mm, you are my brother. You cannot work me for me for nothing. Name your wages. Sit down, sir. This is where I'm going. Not so. Not so. But do you know that you can create a job for yourself? Let me give you one reason, one way of doing it. Say, this is a construction man. Okay? As a construction man, you know in your heart, you desire to do construction work. And there's no job. Okay? Say, if somebody come and say, I just want to volunteer to come and work for you. Don't pay me. I just want to volunteer. Will you chase them? No. <laughs> volunteer to do something. If you know you are skilled in what do you call it now? Those guys who work with timber who do cabinets and stuff like that. If you want to be a carpenter and you know you so desire to be a carpenter or you are skilled, you are a qualified carpenter, you are looking for a job or you are looking for something to start, please go to a carpenter company and say, I don't want your salary. I just want to practice what I know best. Before you know it, if they see that your work is good, my brother, we cannot leave you. We cannot lose this brother. This can be an asset. We want you. My brother, come. Uh, we have decided. What are your plans? No, I, I, I'm just practicing, but my aim is to open my own company one day. What about if we give you an offer? Bless you, sir. But when you sit in your house and say, Lord, bring me work, will it come? And by experience, people that are taken out of their bed, you know those brothers and sisters, they are still sleeping, you go and take them by the hand and say, come my brother, there is a job for you. If you just, somebody sleeping, you take him and put it in a job, it's a matter of time, you won't last. Before you reach your home, you will start to complain. Hey, my brother, it's now lunch time. I don't have even money. Why can you bring here? You don't bring me money to eat. Oh, I brought you food. Something that will feed you. You still want to be my burden. But people who know what they want in life and go for it. Those are the people that become successful in life. 
Start small. Volunteer. Let your scheme, let that which you know most be known by somebody else. This man, Jacob, as he was saving, the man said, ah, the man, the way this man is doing so good, uh -uh, we cannot just leave him like that. He said, Jacob, come. Name your wages. And Jacob said, huh, I have seen this. You've got two daughters, but I've seen the younger one. I want to start a family. Already, he saw what? A family. And Jacob knew it's not prayer that will make him to build a family. It's not prayer that will make him to marry a wife. He need to work for the wife. He said, okay, for seven years, I will work for this woman. Can I say this? One of the problems that we are having today in marriages, we have a problem that we have men who are not men, but they are in marriage. We have men who are not men, but they are where? In marriage. Let me clarify it. Nowadays, we have men who are not prepared to pay anything for a woman. They need a woman who is driving. Woman, men who cannot take responsibility. If a man cannot go extra mile to go for you, it means you are valueless to him, not to God. If you are indeed a good woman, let the man pursue you, not you pursuing after a man. Start pursuing. You will pursue until Jesus comes. He will never stop. Even the car that you are trying to pursue, you will say, okay, my husband, I bought you a car. He will still take the car to drive faster. You can profit. You know this man, I do everything for him. I buy a house, I buy a car, and they're like, how can you not do that? Because for you, it's not a man, it's your, it's your son. It's your son. So you are the mother. Taking care of him. Buying his shoes. Buying everything for him. And what is the duty of a son? It's to enjoy. Now you come and cry and say, my man, my man. It's not a man. It could be a man to others, but for you, it's a son. But real men, real men, they see and say, I'm prepared to die for that woman. Seven years, I will labor for this woman. Somebody, okay, you say you love me, yes. Are you serious? Yes. Okay, let us go and meet my parents. But you must know you have to pay Lobola. Lobola what? If he's not prepared to pay Lobola for you, ha, run away. One day, when you are in trouble, he will run away. Ah, you are in trouble. Don't beg. Run. Ladies, let me tell you something that you don't know. Every man is looking for a good wife. Never say, people are married, people, me, 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 now I have to pursue. No. Beat yourself up. Be the wife. Immediately when you become that wife, the husband will come.
But the problem we have with ladies of today, they don't want to become wives. They want to become men. And when you are men, you want a man to get married to you, it will never work. Two men cannot stay under one roof. It cannot work. It's either you are prepared to become a wife or forget it. Or either get a son. You know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Jacob served. And you know, the funny thing, after serving seven years, they gave him a wrong woman. But look at this. This is a challenge. You serve seven years for the one that you want. They give you the wrong one. They said, do you still want that which you want? Jacob said, yes. He said, okay, another seven years. He said, with pleasure. He continued. Hello? You know, those of us who sometimes do lobola negotiations, if you are not wise, if you want to send people to negotiate lobola for you, please choose people, men and women who are wise. Because if you choose people who are not wise, they will mess up things for you. Because they will say, you will find the family, they say, our daughter is educated. She's got masters. She is a director. She's got her own house. So therefore, we need 120,000. No negotiation. Sit down, sir. When you are a wise man, sir, I understand, to be honest with you, 120 is nothing. It's too small. You cannot put monetary value to your son-in-law. We are here to, bring, to build a relationship, not to fight. I'm not here to buy your daughter out of you. She will still remain your daughter. Now I will become a son. But Leatseva, Malapa Alekan. Families are not the same. So if you take all these cows that I have, and your daughter is still coming to my family to be the family, so you want us to die of hunger? Please don't take all our cows. So we have nine. Can't you just take three at least? That's how you negotiate. You don't say, no, 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 no. This is too much. I can't take it. If they don't want to leave it. No. Some of them, they will do it intentionally to test your patience. I remember in other places when you are going to pay Lobola, you agreed that by six o'clock you will arrive. When you arrive by six, the old man, the owner of the house, is now getting out of the gate. He will stay in the mountain for the whole day. And he will do it intentionally. He want to test what type of family are these people? Are they patient? Because if now you start a, no, 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 no. They say, oh, one day our daughter will miss up once. He will slap her. No, he's not the right man. Hello? But I'm here to tell you that which you are doing that the Lord has this time to lift you up. Today, God will visit you. Amen. Now, after that, the man now be the family inside the family. He had wives, children under the roof of the in-law. And you must understand if you are under the roof of your father and under the roof of your in-law, whatever you have is not yours, it's for your in-law. No man is a man in his father's house. 
You can get married and have children. Your children are your fathers. They belong to your father. They will be yours until you get out. Physically, not spiritually. That is why if you read your Bible, it came to a time where now Jacob said, mm, Father-in-law, I want to go. I want my children, my family. I mean, many of us, why should he beg? Are they not his wife and children? But he understood that they are not yet. Because he had those children under the roof of his father-in-law. Then he went and said, Sir, mm, I've saved you enough. My time has come. I want to go. And the man said, No ways. You are going nowhere. This is where I'm going. He said, Name your wages. Whatever you name that you want me to give to you, I will give to you. Jacob said, no, I don't want any gift from you. This is where I'm going. The problem that we have with many, many people today, many church members today, is because we want to receive. We don't want to work. We want to receive. We don't want to do what? Do you know that as you are now, as you are saying, God, give me a car. God, give me a car. You are not even expecting that you will buy a car. You are expecting that somebody should come and give you a car. And repossess what I gave to you. I am an experience. I know it. As a pastor, one day I've been praying, God, I want a car, I want a car. Somebody just came and said, Pastor, God has touched me. Here is the car. I said, hey, God bless you. I took a car, I drove the car, I love that car. And the reason why this person gave me a car is because the person had two cars. When the bank repossessed the other car, now the person came back to me. <laughs> when it started... Uh, Pastor, I, you know I'm not mobile. Can't you take my children to school? My children does not have transport. Now I became a transport man. Being a pastor. Until one day I became tired of all this. Becoming a transport man. I said, Madam, come and take your car. I know what I'm talking about. But if you work for your own car, you drive with confidence. You know it's a blessing. You can even come and say, because if I give you, tomorrow when I come and knock at the door, there is some goosebumps. Is he coming to collect? Oh. You will become a slave. When he's stuck by 12 midnight, when he calls you, come, I'm stuck. You, there's no way you will wake up. But when it's something that you know that this belongs to, when you say 12 o'clock, you say, oh God, I'm still sleeping, no. I can't come. But when you are driving my car, and I say, I'm stuck, I'm here in uh, Mukopani, come and you will feel, there's no way you'll say, hey, the one I'm driving is Iso, let me go and I'll stuck him. And that is trouble, that is pain. The man said, no, don't give me anything. But I have a way. Here is my wages. Please, church, let us get rid of this mentality of just receiving. Work for that which you need. Work for it. That is why one thing that makes Jacob to have the guts it's because he knew that he paid. That's why he said, ah, sir, I paid you. I worked for seven years. If you look in chapter 32, there's a time where now he started to mention and say, sir, I worked for you 20 years. 14 years for your wife, for your daughters. Six years for the flock. The riches that now you are pursuing. I want you to understand this. 
If you have something that you are doing as a work, there is a day of remembrance. There is a day of visitation. And I'm here today to announce to you that the Lord will visit your work. But, but, I have a problem. If you are not working, when God visits, what will he visit? Yes, Lord, visit my work. But what are you doing with your hands? What is the work that you can... And when we are talking about work, we are not talking about that work that can only generate income. There are certain services that you do for other people. Services is my work. Lord, visit my work. Because when God visits, there are certain things that will happen. First, one thing that will happen when God visits is recognition. Recognition. If God can come and visit your work, will he truly recognize your work? Will he really say, indeed, this is your work. You deserve to be rewarded. When the time when God visited Jacob in his service, the man himself recognized. He said, Jacob, there is something that I have known. I have realized I have noticed your work. Because since you joined my house, what I had was little. And God has blessed me for your, for your sake. There was recognition. Many of us, you could be working for a company. You are praying, oh God, I need a promotion. But my question is, the type of work that you are doing, will that bring recognition on your behalf? Can your boss recognize the work that you are doing? And say, indeed, you need a race. Laban said, Jacob, I don't have any choice. I have recognized that there is a change. Your work is indeed good. Can God look at your service? Can God look at whatever you have done, the work you are doing for him, when he visits, can he really recognize and say, indeed, this is a work that needs a reward. Understand, the Bible says, without faith, no one can please God. But anyone who comes to God must believe that he is. And he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. In other words, he is the rewarder of those whose work is not the work of a lazy man. It's the work of a diligent man. Look at your work. Put it before you. If God can come and visit, will there be any recognition? Elias, the Bible says one day as he was praying, the angel of God came. He saw it in a vision. And the angel said, Hey man, I want you to know something. Your service, your work, what you are doing has now by heaven. Working wherever you are working. When God visits, He does not just visit, He visits because He has remembered you. Can you stand boldly today and say, Lord, here I am. 
Remember my labor. Remember my work. Remember my service. Remember what I have done. Lord, come down and visit my work. There is remembrance. Look at your life. Look at the service that you are doing. Look at the work that you have been doing for God. Does it deserve God's remembrance? Hallelujah. Third thing. When God visits you, when God visits your work, God cannot just visit and go back empty-handed. When he visits, he makes sure there is an increase. Anyone that God will visit, he will make sure that after his visitation, there should be an increase. You want God to increase you. If you are not doing anything, where will God start? Where will he start? Hallelujah. For those of us who are doing business, I want you to know this. As God is going to visit your business today, there is going to be an increase in the name. It doesn't matter where you are. I want to use your boat for the gospel. The Bible says after ministering, then he said to Peter, Peter, I know what you have been doing. Peter said, Sir, we have struggled throughout the night. No results. But because I see you are different, I see you are God, I see you have visited me. At your word, I will dip my net. It only takes God's visitation upon whatever men and women are doing where there will be an increase. If you do anything without God's visitation, what you will do is hard labor with no results. But those that God has visited, there shall be an increase without stress. He dipped the net into the deep. You'll be so surprised what came after. Brethren, it is true you must have knowledge of your business. You must have knowledge of your market. But I want you to know it's good to allow God to visit your business. If only you can allow God to visit your work, there are things that you think you know and you don't know. But when God comes down upon that business, you will see that there are more fountains inside that business that can lift you up. Hallelujah. An increase. The fourth thing, when God visits your work, one thing that you need to understand, God cannot visit you and leave you just like that. He will impart wisdom in your life. Wisdom. Many a times I have heard people saying, you know, this person was so up high there, but we don't understand why is he down? If you make your way up without God, you will come down on your own. But God will make sure that when he raises you up, he will also give you the wisdom to maintain and sustain. God will give you wisdom. Look at what happened. 
when God visited this young man Jacob when the book of remembrance was open recognition was there something happened he was now asked to choose in fact he was the one now who was determining the salary scale he said sir I don't want what you give me this is how I want to be paid he said I will walk among the flock every speckled and brown sheep and goat I will take them apart as my wages and what I want you to understand the reason why he did that he did not choose many he chose few out of many wisdom many of us if we are given an opportunity to determine our salary we want to kill the company you know you are working in the finance the total income of your company is 20 million a year and you know there are all other expenses and everything when they say now determine your salary you said I, I just need 10 million as a salary per year how will that company survive can't you see you're killing yourself you're killing the company hello but a wise man look at the way in which that I will still have the business will still be going and then we'll all be surviving he said I need small but look after they agreed this is wisdom that I've seen the Bible says Jacob he took all those spectacles one the spotted one you know what he did the Bible says he did not resign from his duty post. He said, this is what belongs to me. He gave it to his sons to take care of it while he still remained in the business. Government employees, all of us who are working for somebody else, before you resign, make sure that you are strong and you are standing. I don't know if, should I explain it further? I have seen people because of some opportunities of five years resigning from their work. You get that opportunity to make money after five years, there's not even a plan as to how can you sustain yourself after that opportunity you resign you leave everything after five years opportunity you squander the whole money now you are begging you are going back to the same department do you have a job for me they don't have because you lacked wisdom Jacob said uh -uh. what I will do I will give this percent of mine to my children my children run the business and let us see how it goes as I'm still busy as soon as I see that the business is established, now I can resign. Many of us, we start businesses, it's not even yet established, you resign from your post. You resign with the hope. Yes, it is true, hope does not disappoint. But one other thing that I need to tell you is this. Brethren, many of us, there are things that we call faith. Can I open your eyes when we come to the aspect of faith? When you start anything by faith, you will not fail. But if you start anything by faith, you can fail. This is where I'm coming. Many of us, this thing that we call faith is not faith, it's stupidity. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing. And hearing where? By the word. Brethren, if you start anything without hearing the word of God to base your faith on, you will crumble.
Our Father in the Lord said something last week. I don't know how many of us picked it up. He said, when he said he wants a plan for the 50 capacity, somebody called and said, how are you going to do it? And many of us, I don't know if either we managed to get it. He said, the 50,000 capacity did not come from prophet himself. It came from God. God spoke and he believed God at his weight. That is faith. Faith must be based on what God says. Not an assumption. Because many a times, many of us who are saying faith, faith is an assumption, is not faith. Because there's no basis for our faith. Any house without a foundation will collapse. When you start a business by faith, what is the basis of that faith? Because brethren, times will come where storms will come. When storms come, how will you go to God? But when storm comes, you acted on faith based on the word of God. When it comes, you go back to God and say, God, you said and I took you by your word. Many of us, what we call faith, when we encounter challenges, we don't even have the guts to go, go and say, God, you said. That is why, please, even the ministers of the gospel, if you say God has called you, make sure that truly he has called you. Because if you are not sure of your calling, when storm comes, you cannot go back to him and say, God, you said. Hallelujah. God, you said. I remember I went through tough time as a pastor. One day I went back to God. I said, God, remember I was studying my degree. You said I should leave all and follow you. Is this the type of life that you want me to live? I had guts to go back to him because I knew what he said to me. But if I did not hear him well, I wouldn't even have the guts to say, God, you said. But how many of us said, that's why I did so. This is another mystery that I want you to understand. After Jacob separated and separated his, God gave him a wisdom. He said, take these three branches these three branches these three branches peel off the milk expose the milk into the place where the flock will come and drink because by doing so that is how they will multiply that is wisdom when God visits you he will give you ways ideas of how to increase your business how to do better in your work God is not happy to see you and I being stagnant from a spaza shop you should upgrade to a supermarket from a supermarket you should upgrade to a hypermarket until you spread your wings across. And God, if he visits you, he will give you that wisdom to expand. Hallelujah. 
That is how, that's why when you read the last verses, that is how the men became exceedingly great and prosperous. One thing that I want to give as a warning to some of us is this. Whatever God has given as a work for you to uplift you, please hold it dear to you. Please hold it what? Dear to you. The reason why God opened your eyes and not my eyes is because that was for you. If care is not taken, if you open my eyes, you will run dry. I have seen people that have introduced others to certain businesses. And at the end, those that you have introduced, they are now far greater than you. And then you come down. And that is lack of wisdom. It's not every work that you do that everybody must know what you're doing. Because if some of them know, they will go and put stone on the fountain for the water not to flow. I've, they will come together. How are you making it? And if care is not taken, you will expose the secret and that will be the day you are going down. Some secrets, they should remain your secret. Don't expose them to anybody. Jacob did not tell the secret to his father in law of multiplication. It was his secret and he kept it to himself. And the men became great. There are certain things, there are certain keys that God will reveal to you when he visits you. Please keep it to yourself. You may not know who is who. I remember one, after I did that one day, I suffered for it. Whatever was flowing was closed. I went to God, God, what is happening? Things where he said, it's your big mouth. You talk too much. I remember the other day when I was here, prophet also said to me, you talk too much. I said, hey. And I got the message already. From that day, now I started to send another message. When they asked me, we just called, how are you doing? I said, oh, it's rough and tough. How are you doing? It's rough and tough. And when it's rough and tough, I'm progressing. But when you stand on the high mountain and say, come and see, I'm progressing. If you are not strong, you will fall. In our language, we have something, a saying which says, I will say it in Venda. In Venda, there's a saying which says, Mulachawe oya zumbaham. Mujasahaye oya ipita. Hello? I don't know. Do you have it in Zulu? Mama? In Zulu. In other words, the meaning of this is that those that are enjoying whatever belongs to them, they don't do it in public. They hide themselves. You know what this? I don't know if you have that saying in any other language. Because if care is not taken, remember, when you stand on this pulpit, okay, and then, not, let me not, I'm just giving an, uh, a story. You are standing on the mountain, and as you are standing on the mountain, you are eating ice cream. Okay? You are now blowing a whistle. Come and watch me. I'm eating ice cream. If care is not taken, the ice cream will come and stand here. It will suffocate you. And people will come and say, how can an ordinary ice cream suffocate a person? That is why in our language, we say, 
Molachawe, Uyazumba. It's not everything. It's not every door. It's not every work that the Lord is using to bless you that should be known by anyone. Shall we all rise? Hallelujah. The Lord is good all the time. I don't know what God has said to you this morning or this afternoon. Brethren, let us not lie to ourselves. God wants to visit your work. God want to visit your work. Peter was a fisherman. That was his work. And when God visited, there was a great change. God did not hide this from the beginning. He put it plainly. If you will look in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2, Emphasizing one thing to the children of Israel that if you obey me, if you do what I tell you to do, I will bless the work of your hands. It is the work of your hand that will lift you up. It is that which you do it with your hands that God want to use to lift you up. But my question is, what are you doing with your hands? When God had an encounter with Moses, he said Moses, he asked Moses one question. What is it that you have in your hand? And God is asking the same question to somebody tonight, today. What is it that you have in your hand? I want to bless you. I want to increase you, but if you have something in your hand, diligent in your service. Jacob never saw the results in one year. It took him 20 years, 20 years to see God working in his life. Many of us drop what you're doing, you jump there and live with it. If you have discovered this is what God wants to use to lift me, to lift me, don't leave it. Work on it. Commit yourself. Dedicate yourself to it. And God will really lift you up in the name of Jesus. I want you to open your mouth. This is going to go into two ways. For those of us who are not so sure, what is it that God wants to use to lift me up? I want you to go and ask God, God, show me the type of work that I should do for me to be lifted up. For those of us who knows, you know that this give me the grace not to forsake that we us up. Brethren, it's not easy to carry the Bible. It to you open your mouth wherever you are. In the choir, some of you that which you're doing, your music, your singing, your talent, that is what God wants to As we have done to Jacob, do it likewise to me. Shall we open your mouth and pray? Father in the name of Lord, the grace. 
Lord the grace 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 The grace so Lord the grace, so oh Lord, the grace, Lord, we need your grace, your grace, your, your grace, so oh When the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, the Bible says, we. There's a grace to change you from the position you are to a position that you have never ever imagined that it will ever be in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. People might have looked down on you They could have said nothing good will come out of you. But today I'm here to declare that they have not seen anything yet. Because God Almighty is going to surprise them in the name of Jesus. Amen. They wrote you off. Some of them when they are looking, they say people will be lifted. I'm here to tell you yes, Lord. that does what no man can do. Yes, Lord. Is he not the God of small things? Small things. Yes, the same no that I, I don't think even if they say God can change life not me but I want to tell you today in the name of Jesus the grace is available Amen. to transform your life today receive it in the name of Jesus Amen. the way God works at times is foolish before foolish situation I'm just from you yes, Lord. in the name of Jesus Amen. when we speak of millionaires and billionaires yes, Lord. when you look at yourself now it does not look like it but I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. You are a man. Those that God is going to raise for his kingdom. You are a man. Amen. It will come like a joke. From today, some of you, the things that will come into your head, the aspirations, the dreams that you start to dream, when you look at it, sometimes you will ask yourself, Am I crazy? No, sir. No, madam. This is a confirmation of the. From today, you will speak a language which among your peers it will not make sense. Others may call it arrogance, others may call it pride, but they will never know the realm of the spirit. They are. You don't need in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord, 
you are the one who give increase we have done what we can do the rest of God is for you to do we are waiting with great expectation that all that which we have said and promise shall be fulfilled in our time in the name of Jesus Amen. we thank you Father thank you, Jesus. God bless you are you good? and also to the congregation to wake in anything you lay your hands upon in the name of Jesus I don't know work for fire some of you that rejection have visited your work some of you that you have been abandoned nobody is helping you some of you that you have been in one position for many years without any promotion some of you that you are doing business without profit some of you that people are just owing you without thinking of paying you some of you that people are just messing up and down with appointments without any execution this week i prophesy the lord that visit his people will revisit you for favor favor them in this all the money that they owe you this week that shall be payment yes. every death is cancelled because I am not there physically and you came but my spirit is there and I see what is happening of work for favor in the name of Jesus the Lord said to me somebody is there you are a pastor you are you feel disappointed because you came to see me but you don't know I'm not around you are there God said I should tell you you don't need to worry because he has answered your request an hour ago And there's somebody against you. I see a conspiracy that is ongoing, yes. There's somebody there. I see a conspiracy that is ongoing now. And that conspiracy is at your working place. I see you working in ESCOM. And you, it's like you are a fleet manager, fleet operator, fleet operator in ESCOM. If there's anybody like that, I have a good news for you. This week, God, all that I serve, we expose the conspirators at your place of work. Uh, and I hear that somebody is there as well that has of death following you to that auditorium today if there is fire of God in that auditorium if there is power of God in that auditorium if Jesus lives in that auditorium I ask them now to frustrate that spirit of death out of your life right now with a loud voice let the spirit of sudden death come out of you now in the name of Jesus The Lord is visiting that person now. You spirit of death. You can't kill that one. Come out. You have been exposed. Come out. With a loud voice, come out of that body. Now. Now. Come out. Come out. The ground turned to fire of Jesus. Okay. Who is 
Is somebody bearing in Yati? Zanel, yes. I'm seeing you working in ESCOM. Yes, sir. She works at ESCOM. I'm not sure if she's here today. Is the person there? No, sir. She's not here today, but she's a member of this church. And she's the one she was speaking about who works at You do you know her? Is she our member? Yes, sir. She works at Fleet, as you mentioned earlier, and she has issues. There is a conspiracy at work. Yes, sir, we are aware of it. There is conspiracy. They want to throw her out of her working place. <laughs> but God of Fano, within 24 hours, we fight for her. Amen. Those who want to throw her out of her working place shall go out instead of her in Amen. the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There's somebody also as well. There's a forces of darkness that are fighting you from. I hear a name like Muraka. I don't know. Tembili. If I'm not mistaken. Tembili. Muraka. I pray for everyone there. That enemy have laid curse on your work that you can never do anything. If you can shout this amen louder, the curse is broken and is broken forever in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are favored. Amen. This week shall be a different week. Amen. The Lord show me 17th of August. The gift that God is giving to that person that we never forget in his life. Is he a man? A female papa. It's a woman. It's yes, a woman. Ma'am. Nico Claire. Let the person just roll there on the altar. And that is it. A gift for life. That will make you to be relevant with your children. Children, God is giving it to you. The Lord bless you all. Amen. Please go out into the week with possibilities. Because God Almighty is awaiting for you. The spirit of my father is, is a person. Is a, is a person that God delivered from the spirit of death is there? The person is there. Let uh, one of the pastor, the pastor that preach, let the pastor lay hands on the person and the spirit of death will go out for life. Mm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I hear the voice of God. Is the church hearing me? If you have ever applied for anything, I congratulate you. The key to that thing is given to you now in the name of Jesus. Cause his face to shine upon him of Jesus. You have covered and insured, including your household with the blood of Jesus. Meet me on Tuesdays as we are going to continue our topic of deploying your gift. God bless you all. Shalom. And before you go, I pray for those who are watching Fano TV or watching on Facebook, hearing the sound of my voice. I declare this week a week of favor for harvest in the name of Jesus. That whatever you do this week, there shall be a great harvest as returned in the name of Jesus. 
all the partners of Fano TV, the covenant partners of Fano TV, covenant, covenant pastors of Freedom for All Nations Outreach Worldwide, I pray for you all. This week, the Lord will visit your work. The Lord will make you great. The Lord will prosper you. There shall be no rejection anymore. There shall be no failure anymore. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed. I prophesy good news is on the way for you in Jesus' name. You are blessed. Thank you for listening to my voice. God bless you.